Hi, I'm Ted, and, uh, and I'm a mink farmer in Ontario. Uh, I've been raising mink for over 30 years. It's a family operation that my father started when he was uh, about 15 years old. Um, and now my own family is involved. Um, my daughter and son-in-law are involved with the farm, so that's very exciting for me. As I said, I've been uh, raising mink for over 30 years. Um, after university, uh, I was a salesman or a field rep for a while and uh, thought I didn't make a very good salesman and I, I enjoyed mink ranching much more. So that's why I raised mink and still enjoying it to this day after 30 well, you years. you already had it marked, right? Yeah. Yeah, one of, one of the more common questions we're asked by people when they are not used to a mink ranch and first come onto the farm is how, how do we kill the mink? Uh, we use carbon monoxide gas. Um, it's, uh, we bring a container down the row with the gas in the container. Uh, we put the mink in. Uh, it's an odorless gas, so it's, uh, they don't even realize what's happening. It's stress-free, it's quick, um, and... Um, and it's a system that works well for us and it's very easy on, on the mink end and on the operators. Uh, yeah, we, ha we have some uh, young researchers here. Uh, there are two or three studies being done here by students from the University of Guelph. And, um, and they're working on uh, animal behavior and welfare type research. I'm Lauren Dawson. I'm a master's student at the University of Guelph in the Department of Animal Science. Right now I'm working on farm. I'm giving them um, these, we're calling them getaway bunks. The idea behind the bunks is to give the mothers an area where they can get away from their kits once their kits are becoming um, too demanding. And so the idea is without the bunks, the mothers can experience um, diseases such as mastitis. Also, just weight loss in general, so they can get very, very skinny. And the thing that I'm mostly focusing on is stereotypic behavior. So stereotypic behavior is um, repetitive, invariant, functionless patterns of behaviors. So the idea with the bunks is that once the babies are being really demanding, the mothers can get away from them um, and we expect to see that this, the amount of stereotypic behavior to be a lot lower. We also expect incidents of mastitis and nursing sickness to be almost non-existent. Um, we also expect that the mothers will be um, bigger towards the end once their babies are finally removed, so they'll be, they'll be in a better body condition. And then in terms of the babies, uh, we also expect that the babies, because the mothers will have spent time away from them, the babies will transition to solid food faster. And then um, we expect that they'll also be larger because of that. So animal welfare, the definition of it would be um, kind of maximizing both physical, mental, psychological well-being of the animal. I think that they take really good care of the animals. Um, I was actually kind of surprised. The impression I got of mink farming was that it was going to be really awful. But then when, I, when I've come here and I've watched them work and I've seen how they, how they operate, they get their feed twice a day. Every animal is looked at multiple times a day to be sure that they're not sick, that they don't have any other kinds of health problems or indicators of, of bad care. And I think compared to other farmed animals, mink have it pretty much the best. So.